Hey guys, it's Mr. Bringle, and today I'm going to be going over Scientific Methods Learning Sheet 1. So I'm going to go through this whole thing that's going to talk about linearization and how to linearize the different types of graphs. So if you're confused on this, this will be good for you. There's the bell going off, I'm doing this during lunch. Okay. So, um, first thing we want to do here is I already have my data put into these sheets. You would, of course, need to get this from uh, Scientific Methods Learning Sheet 1. It gives you all the data that you need. Um, so, the first thing, we'll go ahead and highlight this, and we're going to make a graph here. I'm just clicking the little chart button up here. It also works to hit Insert Chart. That's fine. Now, when this comes up initially here, it's got red and blue data um, that tells me that something's wrong so you want to go down here to the to the right corner and choose use column a as labels um, that's going to fix that issue for you and then of course we'll go over here and scroll down below the pie charts to get a scatter plot uh, next step we'll go over to customize and the first thing I want you to do every time is click on horizontal axis right here and if this box is checked treat labels as text you need to uncheck that box okay um, and then just double check your axis to make sure that it didn't flip this sometimes it will and you may need to click this but this looks okay um, so I'm just gonna leave that as is next step would be to go to series and um, you will follow a couple steps through this. The first thing you need to hit trend line and then you need to hit R squared value. So it's always going to start as linear um, but when I look at this R squared value um, and if you can follow my mouse it's right here uh, 0 0.341 that is so far away from 1.0 that I know for sure that this is not linear. Okay so when it's not linear you need to switch this to polynomial um, a polynomial curve and I know it looks a little funky because of the scaling here but but this generally you can you can tell that this is a hyperbola so you don't actually need an equation on curved graphs because we won't deal with those the only thing that I really care about is that you have an equation on your linearized graph so uh, we're actually done with this um, other than I'm sorry I forgot we need to look at the title and um, the vertical and horizontal axes so I forgot those and that's easy Easy to do right so um, the first thing our horizontal axis it's always going to be our x-axis will always be the first column that we're graphing and then our y-axis is going to be the second column okay so I want to make sure that I label my horizontal axis as volume and that should be units of meters cubed okay and then I'm going to go over to my vertical axis and that should be pressure in Pascals, which is just PA, you can you can do it just like that. That's fine. Okay, and then if I'm going to my title now, my title has to be Y versus X. So you can see here that this has actually flipped it for me. It actually needs to be pressure on the Y axis versus volume, and you do not need units uh, for your titles. Okay, so that's the first graph done. We're ready to go to the linearization part. Now since this is a hyperbola, we are going to want to graph with 1 over x, not x. So down here I'm going to write that 1 over x, and then this column is still going to be y. So uh, what I can do is I can just, I'm just copying and I'm pasting this title here. I do have to change the title for my x-axis because it's no longer just volume. It's now 1 over volume. And a common mistake that people make is they forget that that also changes the units. So your units now need to be 1 over meters cubed. Okay, so um, again, a, a little trick. I know I went over this in class, but a little trick here. If, if you don't like how that cuts everything off, you can just come up here to this little button that's and it says text wrapping, and you can wrap that, and uh, it'll it'll move it like that. So that's kind of nice. Now. For the y-axis, we're not changing anything, so I'm just going to hit equals, and then I'm going to click on this here on pressure uh, 40, and then I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm just going to drag this down. Whoops. I'm going to drag this down. Make sure when, you, when you're when you trying to put an equation in, you have to drag from this little blue box to get the equation to go into all of these down here. So now all that's happened, if you, if you look at this, it just says equals B2, because that's what I clicked on. And then this one down here is equals B3, because... Uh, it's just filling in the equation. Now we'll do the same thing with 1 over volume except it's going to be a little, little more complicated. We're going to hit 1 divided by 
and then we hit the x value, okay? So this is one over x, right? That's what we're doing, one over, and then our original x value. I hit enter on that, and then I can go ahead and drag that down, and it's gonna do one over x for all of these. Notice how it switches from one over a2 to one over a3, one over a4 as I move down, okay? So now I've got one over x and y, and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this data and insert another chart. And I'm going to go through that, those same steps that we did before. So I'm going to make this a scatter plot. Use column D as labels. We're going to go over here to customize and start with the horizontal axis. Um, we want to uncheck treat labels as text. And you notice how that changes my data drastically. This looks like a hyperbola. This looks like a line. So that's a big deal. Don't forget to do that. Um, sometimes that will be unchecked to start with. But you always need to check it. So. Um, now I'm going to go over here to series. I'm going to put a trend line on this. I'm going to put my R squared value on that. And, and look at that. My R squared value is actually one exactly. So I don't need to do anything in terms of changing this from linear to polynomial. Just leave it linear. And then my label, use equation. Now we've got an equation on there um, to help us. The last thing I would just need to do would be my, uh, my title and my horizontal and vertical axes. Now, again, be careful here because this is no longer volume. It's one over volume and one over meters cubed for my x-axis, okay? And then for my vertical axis, the y-axis, it's still pressure in pascals, okay? Now, we'll just check the title real quick. This is actually messed up, so this is going to be pressure versus, whoops, versus one over volume, okay? So now I have my linearized graph right here, and I am done with that, uh, with this set of data, okay? So that's the first one out of the way. Let's go ahead and move on to number two here, and I'm gonna move a little bit quicker through these. So again, we're just gonna take this data and we're gonna make a graph. I'm gonna make sure that I click column A as labels. We're gonna get a scatter plot. I'm going to go to customize, check my horizontal axis, and there it is, it checked that box again, so I need to undo that. I'm going to go up here, sorry, I'm going to go to series first, I'm going to put a trend line on this, and R squared value. So with this graph, this gave me an R squared value of 0.929, and that's actually not bad. Um, normally we want it to be 0.95 or higher, but for our purposes, let's check and see what it is with the polynomial curve. Okay, so look at that. That changed the R-squared value to 1. So even though the linear R-squared value is not bad at 0.92, if I check the polynomial curve, that has a better R-squared value, which to me tells me, okay, you know what? This is actually a parabola. This is not a line. So I'm going to leave this as polynomial. I don't need an equation. Uh, for this graph. However, I do need to make sure that my title and my axes are okay. So the horizontal axis is going to be time, and that's in seconds. And then my vertical axis is going to be position. If I can spell position, position, and that's in meters. Uh, we then need to go to the title, and this should be a position versus time graph. Okay. And we are going to use position versus time graphs quite a bit in our next velocity unit. There we go. Spell position right. Okay, so now I'm done with this first graph. I have a, uh, I got a nice parabola there with an R-squared value of 1, so that's super nice. Now, for a parabola, um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to graph uh, y versus x squared. So I'm going to label these again. Remember, this is the first column's x, this first column's y. Now, over here, I'm going to be doing x squared and y. Okay, so that means that my title for y is going to stay the same, so I'm just going to move that over there, and that means that my data for y is going to stay the same. So I'm just going to fill that in. That's exactly the same as what I have over here. Now the thing that changes is time. So this is now time squared. And if you square time, that means you have to square the units. Um, and so that means that we're going to have seconds squared here. Okay, so now in order to square all those values, I'm going to hit the equal sign. Okay, then I'm going to pick the first data point 
and I'm going to do that little carrot. You press shift and six at the same time and it gives you that little carrot and then I'm going to put a two there. When I hit enter, that's the squared value. So I got to click on that again and drag it down and just so we can check our, our data, if you look at five, five squared is 25, four squared is 16. Harder to do with decimals obviously, but this is correct. So now I'm going to linearize this uh, by highlighting the data, insert the chart again, use column D as labels, make sure that it's a scatter plot. You guys will get to the point where this is, you know, second nature to you. It'll take you two seconds to make a graph. Uh, we want to uncheck treat labels as text. I'm going to go back to series here. I'm going to add a trend line and show the R squared value. Oh man, it's, it's linear. It's one exactly, so that's perfect. We're going to go ahead and put that equation on there. Don't forget your equation on the linear graphs. And uh, at this point, the last thing we need to do is just get a, a title, uh, make sure our axes are labeled. So um, I'm going to go over here and start with the horizontal axis. Now remember, we squared the horizontal axis. So this is now time squared. If you put time on your x-axis there, it's wrong because that's what was on the last graph. So seconds squared for my units. And then I'm going to go to my vertical axis, and that's going to be position in meters. And then remember, your title does not need units in it, so this is just going to be position versus time squared graph. Okay, so again, the title would be wrong if you put position versus time because that's not what it is. Okay, so we're done with, uh, with graph two here. We'll move on to graph three. Now, you guys are going to see when I do this that this one is actually going to come out to be linear to begin with and that this is already checked so I don't have to mess with that come over here to horizontal axis I do want to uncheck this um, and then I'll go to series trend line R squared value it's got a R squared value of 0.99 so I'm pretty confident that that is a straight line I can go ahead and add my equation on there and then I all I need to do here is um, this actually has it set up for me. I already have my, uh, my x-axis is fine with the label. My y-axis is fine. Um, I don't need the units up here on my title, but it's not a big deal. Um, and then you're done. You don't have to do anything else with that graph because it's already linear. So let's go to graph four. And uh, this is time and velocity. And we're going to make a velocity versus time graph here. So I'm going to go ahead and get in here and, and fix all this up. Get a scatter plot. Go over to Customize, Horizontal Axis. Again, I need to uncheck this. It's going to change my data. Let's get a trend line on there and an R-squared value. Okay, so here's another situation where we've got a pretty decent R-squared value, but it's not exactly where we want it. So R-squared is equal to 0.925. Well, let's just change this to polynomial. And you can actually see that the R squared value does go up to 0.981. So that tells me, okay, this is a Groot graph. Okay, I'm going to treat it as such. So let me get this a little bit smaller here. Um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, just, uh, just very quickly, your x-axis here should be time. Okay, so that should be on the x, and then velocity should be on the y. Um, I'm just going to skip that part right now since we've done enough of these. Now, for a Groot graph, we are going to need to square y instead of x. So remember, Groot square root. So our, our, the equation there is y equals the square root of x, but if you go back to your notes, you'll see how we manipulated that to turn it into y squared is equal to x. So we're going to leave x how it is, but then over here we are going to square y. So this one's a little different than the other ones. I'm going to keep my time values the same. So going through that same step of, of just, uh, you can copy and paste these values over here, but I found in my experience that sometimes, for whatever reason, when you copy and paste the data, it will sometimes mess up your graph. So that's why I always hit the equal sign and then click on the data. Um, now over here, this is squared. So now it's velocity squared. And then again, a common mistake, when it's meters per second squared, that actually means that you need to square both the meters and the seconds, okay? So it's meters squared over seconds squared. 
Now, technically, you could put that squared on the outside of the parentheses, but again, in my experience, what I have found is that people will tend to mess that up and not square everything when they try and, and manipula manipulate the units. So for this, we're going to hit equals. I'm going to click on the value for the velocity, and then I'm going to hit the shift and six for the caret, square it, hit enter, and then I'm just going to drag this down. And again, we can, we can kind of, if you want to check these values um, by putting them into a calculator, that's fine, but these are correct. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my graph, and I'm going to make sure everything's checked over here. Go to Customize, Horizontal Axis, make sure Treat Labels as Text is not checked. And then I can add my trend line, show my R-squared value, and look at that. Now I have a linear graph. It's a R-squared value of 0.999, um, and I want to put an equation on there. Okay. Uh, so the last thing, since this is the linearized graph, I'll go ahead and make sure that our, our axes are labeled the way they're supposed to be. This should be time and seconds on the horizontal axis, the x-axis. And then on the vertical axis, this is velocity squared. And again, that's in meters squared over seconds squared. And then my chart title would then need to be velocity squared versus time. And I don't really mind, I mean, if, if this was something that you were turning in like professionally, you would obviously want to capitalize, um, you know, your title and whatnot. I don't care too much about it, so not a big deal. Uh, and right there, you're finished uh, with all of the graphing. The last step would be to come over here to your Scientific Methods Worksheet 1. Uh, obviously, make sure that you get your name on there. And then um, what you're going to do is, is you're going to go back to Graph 1 here, and I would just take this graph right here and hit Control-C or Command-C on a Mac to copy it, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste my original graph right here. Now, you do want to link to your spreadsheet. What that's going to do is if I change anything on my spreadsheet over here, uh, then I can come over here and there'll be a button that'll say Update, and I can just click that and it will change it so that it looks exactly uh, like it does on your spreadsheet. Um, now, the next step, it says... Um, we should put the linearized graph below that. So now I'm just going to copy this one, Control C or Command C, and then Control V or Command V to paste it here. So now I've got my two graphs right there. Um, now the last thing, it says write an appropriate mathematical expression for the relationship between variables. This we went over um, notes on how to make the mathematical expression otherwise known as the physics equation in class. You're going to draw that off of your linear graph. Um, I'm not going to go through that here, but once you get that in, you're done with graph one. Go ahead and fill everything in for graph two, three, and four, and you're good to go.